Hi, welcome to Expand Your Us. This is the beginning of the 2021 Lenten season. And each week I will post um, a few thoughts followed by um, some quotes I've curated from various thinkers um, and beers and doers uh, across the world and, and um, across, across the capturing of written word <laughs> through humanity. Um, and uh, then I'll follow that with um, scripture readings taken from, from the Bible. Um, I do wanna acknowledge that all of the readings are um, pieces of poetry taken out of scripture. And I know enough about uh, the way students read poetry in school that for some of you that is the best news ever and for some of you that makes you feel nauseated and so i just want to say a quick word as someone who has had to work hard to appreciate poetry i tend to lean toward fiction and nonfiction um prose in my life and so um but i've learned this poetry has a way of inviting us into some stillness Poetry has a way of creating space for us to think about the way words and images and the natural wor world um, affects and ignites our imagination. Uh, poetry has a way of helping us see the way that words impact us just as much as silence impacts us. Um, that sitting is often just as important as doing in terms of um, the way that we evolve and the way that we grow. And so I hope that that is a little apologetic uh, that will entice you to hang with some poetry, even if you don't really love it all that much. Um, the other thing I'll say is that when we think about the biblical canon, a, a lot of people who have spent a lot of time walking with God are inspired to write poetry. It's a natural response of spending time with God because the Bible has a ton of poetry in it. And so uh, I just say that to, to suggest that maybe it's worth us taking a look. And if you are an advocate of poetry, whether it's music, uh, spoken word, or on the page, um, I hope that I did not just offend your sensibilities with my need to defend the choice to use poetry. Um, anyway, here is this week's essay. I hope you enjoy it. And I hope that you're season of Lent uh, is life-giving for you. Last year, a global pandemic erupted in the middle of Lent. Although it comes every year, this particular year, Lent feels like a time warp. We were just here. I encourage you, if this resonates with you, to lean into this feeling, recognizing that we are often powerless to change our circumstances, to heal our woes, to protect those we love, Maybe we used to think life was linear, so our only chance to find meaning or joy was to work hard and fast until we felt secure. But this second pandemic Lent forces us to recognize that life with God is not linear, that God's timing is eternal, and this is confusing to us. God is present everywhere, and our life with Christ has seasons of doing, of being, of plenty, of want, of joy, of pain, of rush, and of stillness. The pandemic has felt for many like a pause, and I hope this year we'll recognize that sometimes frantic doing actually hurts our ability to find security. Lent allows us to observe that joy and meaning often come in moments of stillness, silence, and solitude. What better time to lean in than when we are forced to be still, to be silent, to be alone? We diminish the power of God when we try to protect and expand our own power and security instead of looking to God for significance or peace. In the past, I wanted God's kingdom to be made in my image. <laughs> so the hardest workers and the kindest, most intentional people won the day. The Beatitudes though remind us that God's values are very different than mine. God promises to be present, generous, and sustaining to those who have no power, to those who are near the margins, to those who align themselves with those overlooked. Knowing this, I'll suggest a few disciplines for the season ahead. And most of these are practices in, in Catholic uh, faith groups. And so I've stolen them from, from, from great Catholic churches. Uh, so first you could consider giving up a treat and excess and activity that gives you a hit of pleasure. When you long for the satisfaction that that thing brings, Ask God to reveal the hunger you have for comfort or belonging and to sit with it before your maker. A second option would be to consider making an effort to spend time with those who are underserved and overlooked by your community. 
find people and institutions who care for vulnerable people and increase your proximity to widows, orphans, immigrants, refugees, and those trapped in poverty, learning from and serving them. A third option would be to consider picking up a new practice for these 40 days that allows you to make space for stillness, silence, and solitude. Pay attention to your body's sensation, your mind's thoughts, and your heart's emotions as you contemplate the love of God for you. Pray scripture and try sitting before God, consenting to divine action, and just being with God. Given the chance to introduce himself, God says, I am. That's my best name. I am the present one, the always here one, the never past or future tense one, the ongoing and the moment one. To be near God is to be awake for this life, for these current moments, joyful and heartbreaking and everything in between. May these readings be an invitation into presence with yourself, with others, with the God of I am. For these 40 days, allow yourself to recognize the abundance in your life while also leaning into those lean places. And we have a lot this year. There is grief and suffering unimaginable in so many families that I care about. In my own experience of God, there is a connecting holiness and embodied solidarity that comes when I decide to stay present with my pain instead of escaping. The Torah and the Bible speak of a God who is willing to wrestle with us, to cry with us, to listen to our lament. Indeed, God is just as present when we cry as when we refuse to let the tears come, only hoping for or seeing the good. This Lent, create moments of stillness so you can notice your own joy and heartbreak. Cry or don't, <laughs> but don't believe the lie that crying is unfaithful. If we want to prepare ourselves for Christ's coming kingdom, we would do well to spend 40 days marinating in the words Jesus used to describe it. On Tuesdays, I'll post a few thoughts and quotes for the week ahead. Each day there is a scriptural reading, all poetry, yikes, or yay. <laughs> and each Sunday we will read the Beatitudes and woes from the Gospel of Luke, spoken by Jesus. Dear friends, find stillness and believe the Gospel. So these are the two quotes to ponder this week from Brother Lawrence. God is that way with us. He wants to hold us still with him in silence. They cannot all be brilliant or rich or beautiful. They cannot all even dream beautiful dreams like God gives some of us. They cannot all enjoy music. Their hearts do not all burn with love, but everybody can learn to hold God. We shall not become like Christ until we give him more time. And from Anne Lamott, maybe, you're, maybe you search for understanding, but find only one thing for sure, which is that truth comes in small moments and visions, not galaxies and can canyons, not the crash of ocean waves and symbols. Most traditions teach that truth is in these small, holy moments. There are scriptures below that I will not give to you now. Uh, you can go to expandyourus.com to see those. Um, and I do pray friends, that you would experience a lot of those still, small, holy moments. Um, be well.